Um, I'm the thank you person. From the time I journeyed from North Rogers to start first grade at Pepperdine Elementary School, and Jeff left South Jefferson to attend Sunshine Elementary School, we anticipated our 12 years in Springfield Public Schools would be filled with wonder. For three generations, our combined families, the Williamses and the Johnsons, have over 150 years of Springfield Public School experience. We are so glad to have friends here today, friends from first grade through junior high and high school, to share in this honor and love Springfield Public Schools as much as we do. So thank you for being here. Marilyn, did you bring the autograph book? <laughs> okay. Um, thanks to Teresa Gladsoe from Springfield Public Schools and her team. Um, they have worked so hard to put this together, and it's such a beautiful event and has been all week long, so thank you so much. And of course, 417, uh, Caroline Mund interviewed us and was just the best. So, Ida, is she here today, Teresa? Yeah, I, she's wonderful. Thank you, Caroline. Um, Natalie Murdoch, I may repeat some of the stuff you prepared. Um, we appreciate your being part of this celebration because it's been such an important part of our lives. Uh, Dr. Lathan, I just, I told you I wanted to go to lunch, but you know, instead you celebrated all week with us. So uh, this is better. <laughs> we're so glad to have her here and she's just gonna make such a difference. So we're, we're very grateful for you, thank you. Um, and of course, I, we'd like to thank Bob Johnson, and we're glad he didn't sing the Johnson song to you because sometimes he does. And, <laughs> and Sally, um, Alina, Dave Gerhardt, thank you for talking about us and being so genuine and, and loving us like you do. So thank you for that. You know, um, Jeff and I worked together to endow the Viking Fund at Parkview and the Falcon Fund at Glendale to provide opportunities for students in academic and extracurricular pursuits. Today, we're proud to say that all Springfield High Schools have funds for students who need a little extra to participate in school activities. These students may very well be the next SPS alumni honored by you. The Springfield Public Schools Foundation, as you heard, and their uh, collaborations with businesses and uh, the Springfield community sets our schools apart. We're different than some other systems. We are fortunate to have that support with currently $6 million in endowed funds, so now you've heard that twice. And since 1990, the Springfield Public Schools Foundation has given $20 million to teachers and students. We are so proud to have been part of your vision with Nancy Graff, David Harrison, Carol Williamson, so many others. It was some project in 1990. Congratulations and thank you so much. And then about that wonder, you know, I was six years old, Jeff was six years old. But it's funny because this week I found it all over again. Natalie Caldwell at Parkview and your students, I'm telling you, they're the best. And we had such a good time visiting with you. So thank you for having us yesterday. And jo Josh Groves at Glendale and your students and Ms. Jasmine over here, we just had the same sense of wonder. So aren't we lucky? Mm-hmm, we are. And I felt it with Jennifer and Chip and Kate when they went to school. We felt it when we went to school. So that's my thank you right there. Thank you. Thank you so much. The wonder is still here in Springfield. It hasn't stopped. <clears throat> well, after Brandy's talk, my daughter Kate turned to me and she said, hard act to follow, Dad. 
We were given some guidance about our remarks today. Uh, first, be brief. Second, say your thank yous and share any wisdom or lessons you learned in school. And third, um, be brief. <laughs> Marcia has thanked uh, everyone for both of us, and I just want to echo her thanks. I would like to share, though, a few brief stories uh, of some of the lessons I learned while a student in Springfield. And if you're gonna, <clears throat> I have to get my breeding specs out. The first occurred in the second grade at Sunshine Elementary. My friend and I were, for want of a better word, playground terrorists. We would chase other children, primarily girls, and round them up and put them in our makeshift jail in the middle of the jungle gym. Some of you younger folks may want to Google jungle gyms. As expected, some of the kids fell and scraped their elbows and knees and then told their parents what had occurred when they were quizzed at home. Word got back to Sunshine, and this became a source of consternation for Jesse Eliff, the principal. However, instead of calling our parents and setting up one of those dreaded, you know, principal parent conferences, Ms. Eliff called my friend and I into her office and told us out of all of the children in the first, second, third grade, she had chosen the two of us to be playground safety officers. <clears throat> she even had little badges made for us. Well, after that, the playground became pretty safe. The lesson I learned was that leaders are able to guide and direct energy and enthusiasm in a direction that achieves a positive outcome. The second story occurs in high school. Marcia went to Glendale, I went to Parkview, but at that time we were boyfriend and girlfriend. Then the principal, the assistant principal at Glendale at that time was a gentleman named Russell King. When I came back to practice in the Springfield, Mr. Uh, Mr. Keene became a patient of mine. He would start out every visit by saying, you know, Jeff, I remember you cutting class and coming out to Glendale to visit that Marcia Williams. <laughs> and I had to call Fred Baldwin, who was the principal at Parkview at the time, and tell him I was sending you back. <laughs> I was just trying to court the girl who would later become my wife. After several years, I said, you know, Mr. King, I think I turned out okay. <laughs> the lesson here is if your goal is righteous and worthy, it is sometimes necessary to bend the rules. <laughs> the summer, my granddaughter, who is a third grader in Arkansas, <clears throat> and I were headed to lunch and driving down Sunshine. We passed that Sunshine School and I pointed to it and I said, Edie, that's where I went when I was in the third grade. Her eyes got big and she looked astonished and she said, how does it even still exist? <laughs> the takeaway is that if you build something well and nurture it and invest in it, like a marriage, it can last a long time. Finally, in 1993, David Harrison collected words of wisdom from students across the district and compiled them in a book uh, uh, titled, What I Have Learned So Far. On page 115 of that book, a then nine-year-old student at Fairbanks wrote, if you don't water a plant, it won't grow. I can't say it any better than that. Thank you so much for being here to share this honor with all four of us. I appreciate it, thank you.